You're listening to CRV Embreed's Better Herd podcast, brought to you in partnership with the New Zealand Dairy Exporter. Join us as we talk to CRV Embreed experts, industry leaders and farmers about hot topics and issues affecting herd improvement in New Zealand's dairy industry today. Keep current with industry news and get practical tips for improving the health and efficiency of your herd. Hi, I'm Rosanna Dixon, the Upper North Island Regional Sales Manager with CRV. Improving pregnancy rates within their herd is important for New Zealand dairy farmers, but that is only one step. Keeping that pregnancy is the next important stage. University research has shown that the stronger the intensity of a cow's heat, the better chance she has of holding her pregnancy. Dr Kai Poehler, Assistant Professor at Texas A&M University, recently presented these latest dairy cattle fertility research findings to CRV Ambreed field consultants and AB managers. Kai began his academic career with a Bachelor of Animal Science from Texas A&M University. Following this, he completed an MS and PhD in Reproductive Physiology at the University of Missouri, before becoming a professor at the University of Tennessee. Kai is currently at Texas A&M University in the Department of Animal Science as a reproductive physiologist, as well as working with many universities across Brazil. Welcome, Kai, all the way from the USA. Yeah, thanks for having me. You have quite an impressive academic background. I mean, whew, where did your interest in animal science begin? Yeah, that's a really good question. It's something that I often think about as I think about what I do on a daily basis and as I talk to students and producers. I guess for me, it, it started as a young child. I grew up on a diversified livestock operation in the southern United States in Texas, uh, where we had a mainly a beef cattle operation and a poultry farm. And I think that interacting with the animals on a daily basis, being out on on the farm, always doing stuff with my dad and my brothers is really what led to my interest in, in animal science. And then as I started school, I had the great fortune to have uh, two very smart siblings. One is a veterinarian and one is a medical doctor. And I realized very quickly that I didn't want to do either of the things that they did. And so I sort of carved my own path in a research career and where I ended up today. So, but really started as a, a young person out on the farm. So as a specialist in reproductive efficiency, one of the topics I understand you're interested in is helping farmers increase fertility by decreasing pregnancy loss. So what have you found out from doing this research? One of the big things, you know, as we sort of focus on reproductive efficiency, when it really all boils down to it at the end of the day, obviously the less money that we can stick into an individual animal and result in a pregnancy and a live calf born and be able to to get that animal to complete another production cycle is what's important. The really important thing when we sort of sort all that out is we have to minimize the inefficiencies that go into it. And so if we take these and, and think about what the realistic outcomes are and what the realistic expectations, I think that's really the first place to start. So if we go into our, our breeding season or go into our reproductive management programs in our dairies and, and we think that we're going to get 100% of the cows pregnant and we're going to be as efficient as, you know, have 100% efficiency, those types of expectations just aren't out there. And I think that the first thing to do is, is work with your reproductive specialists in your area, set your realistic expectations, set some goals as a producer, set some goals for your operation, and then work to achieving those goals. And so if we talk about thinking that fertilization rates, you know, might be in the 80s to 75%, thinking that first P1s are somewhere in the 30 to 40 percent, and then monitoring the pregnancy rate between the P1s and the P2s. These are all sort of critical things to do. And the most important thing as we sort of go through and think about reproductive efficiency that, that I have found, and I think this holds true for a lot of different things in agriculture, is just because something's working well for your neighbor's dairy or, or a dairy down the road doesn't mean that it's going to work well for you. It's very important that you set sort of individualized plans by working with your field staff and the, the experts in the area to help you set a plan for your dairy and one that you can be successful with. And I think that what we have found from a research point of view is 
we know that reproductive inefficiency occurs, right? And there's nothing surprising about that. We know that cows aren't going to get pregnant. We know that cows are going to lose pregnancies. But probably the most important thing to think about is how can we decrease that from happening? And I think we're going to talk about that in a little bit. And then how can we think about where reproductive inefficiency is taking place to minimize the economic impact that it's having on us? Because we don't have to eliminate it all from the herd. We just need to, to manage it in a way where from a financial point of view, it doesn't bankrupt our dairy, right? Because there's a lot of other factors that go into financials and, and the things that are important. So realistic expectations, making a solid plan, a, a solid goal and following it, and then knowing that reproductive inefficiency is occurring and is totally normal and it's about minimizing it. Fertility is such an important issue for the dairy industry. How can farmers ensure they're mating at the correct time of the estrus cycle? I think you mentioned the significance of the strength of the heat. Yep, that's exactly right. One of the big things that we have been working on is, is estrus detection and the intensity of that estrus or the intensity of that heat that the cow is having in her estrus cycle. And essentially what we have found over a number of different studies now really around the world is that when cows express a greater intensity of heat or estrus, that it leads to better fertility, not only at a P1, so better pregnancy rates at a P1, but less pregnancy loss when we go from a P1 to calving or a P1 to a P2. And so as we think about that, I think that's, you know, doing heat detection and doing strict heat detection using estrus aids, estrus detection aids. In this case, we've been using a lot of the estrotech patches that are, are sort of these uh, sticky patches that go on the cow's back to be able to detect uh, estrus. Using those type of things can really help you in advancing on when I should breed the cow. But I like to think about it is you can make management decisions. So I tell people all the time, we collect a lot of data in the dairy industry, right? We collect milk weights, we collect weight of our cows, pregnancy rates, etc. But if you collect something and you don't use it to make a management decision, then a lot of times it's probably not worth collecting. And so in this case, we're collecting estrus detection data, heat detection data. We'll determine how strong that estrus intensity is, how strong that heat response is, and make a management decision based on that. So what our data shows is that if cows have a really strong estrus intensity, that cow is going to have very good fertility and decreased pregnancy loss. If a cow doesn't have a very good estrus response or low estrus intensity, then she's going to have lower fertility and increased pregnancy loss. So how do I manage that? Well, if I'm standing and, and I have a tank full of CRV semen and I'm standing behind the cow and I'm going to breed that cow to two different bulls, one is, let's say, a, a bull that costs $50 and another bull costs $15, I'm most likely going to put my $50 straw of semen in the cow that has the highest chance to conceive and maintain her pregnancy. And I think that as we think about managing reproduction and economics together, those are some of the decisions that can be made standing right behind the cow. Obviously, there's planned matings that need to take place, but this is something that from a management point of view, I think can be easily integrated in that point. The other thing is that with the scoring of Estrotech patches. We've done a lot of work with Estrotech here in the United States and across the world to develop a scoring system using their patch. And so we originally scored about 10,000 Estrotech patches based on estrus intensity. And, you know, the thing that, that we learned is, is all the data that I've already discussed. But the other thing that I really learned is it's very difficult to give a score to an estrotech patch just when you're out in the field. And what I mean by score is we're basically looking at this patch on this cow's back and determining is 25% of the patch rubbed off, is 75% of the patch rubbed off, etc. And for somebody that can spill in a lot of time and analyze it, it might not be that difficult. But what we did is we worked with Estrotech, and in 2019, we released a, a new product called the Estrotech breeding patch that was able to detect or, or basically to visually tell whether 50% of the patch had been rubbed off or not. And that's really the sweet spot here is we need at least 50% of that patch rubbed off to get to that next level of fertility and decrease pregnancy loss in those animals. So I understand the Estrotech patches have been used in your research to also predict pregnancy. 
Can you tell us how that works and how reliable have been the results? So what we have done is, especially in situations where we're leaving EstroTech patches on in a post-AI situation or a post-mating situation, we have followed those cows to evaluate pregnancy at a P1. And essentially, you know, it's not a new concept, right? If a cow doesn't come back into estrus, there's a high probability that she's pregnant. And so what we did in those studies was we basically left the EstroTech patches on, We also let the cows go forward for their P1 for the pregnancy diagnosis. At the P1, we did a a pregnancy diagnosis either with ultrasound or blood-based pregnancy testing. And we also read the patch. So if the patch was activated, meaning the cow showed estrus, that would mean that the patch diagnosed her as non-pregnant. And if she didn't have an activated patch, so she didn't show estrus, then that means the patch would diagnose her as pregnant. And what we found was that it was actually quite accurate and just as accurate as a lot of the blood-based pregnancy tests that are out there in regards to utilizing the patch to determine pregnancy status. Now, I say that and you have to remember that there's a lot of other things that factor into having a cow not come into estrus. And so this has to really be, I put a word of caution in here that you just can't turn animals loose with patches on and expect that you're going to be able to diagnose pregnancy this way. But in a situation that you know the cows are having normal estrus cycles, this is a valuable method that could be used, especially in a situation where you're observing heat on a very frequent basis. And one other point that I just want to make there is not only for the initial pregnancy, but also for pregnancy loss, this is another factor that could be taken into account. So one of the things that I see as a valuable option for dairy producers, let's say you have a P1 that's done, right? So you do your normal P1, whether it's a rectal palpation or whatever you might be doing. But, you know, EstroTech patches continue to decrease in price. And if you put a patch on the cow's back at the P1 and let her go forward, if she comes back into heat after the P1, great, you've caught her and it caught that pregnancy loss. If she doesn't, then she's most likely maintained that pregnancy. I wouldn't discount that as an option either if you're in a situation where maybe you're having an issue with pregnancy loss, you're really trying to nail it down, or you have a situation where you're just trying to really get your herd as efficient as possible and you don't mind spending those few extra dollars to use those patches in that P1 to P2 area. Such an important um, point that you make there. It's about the capturing that loss between you know, waiting until the end of mating and then suddenly realising that she's no longer pregnant even though she was. And capturing that data is so vital and definitely an area of focus for us here in New Zealand. So Kai, this research that you've conducted, is has it pretty much all been done in the USA or how does this apply to the New Zealand environment? That is a really good question and something that needs to be taken into account. So what we've tried to do from a research point of view is, you know, here at Texas A&M, we are in a unique situation where we're located in Texas because we have a lot of different climates, right? So if you go from Southern Texas all the way up to Northern Texas, you'll experience everything from a tropical, subtropical environment all the way up to more of a temper-based climate. So across Texas, the dairies that we are working with and the producers that we are working with really span all different avenues of producers that from a climate point of view. Now, where a lot of our work is also done in South America with uh, dairies and predominantly grazing dairies in South America that we've done some of this work on. And so, you know, what I can say to that question is, one, we've done this in in Holstein-based cows. We've done this in crossbred cows. We've done this in Boss Indicus, Boss Taurus cross cows, the Girolando, for example, in Brazil. And the results always come out the same. And, and the same is true versus a confinement or more of a conventional-based dairy versus a, a grazing-based dairy. If a cow has a strong estrus intensity or shows a strong heat, no matter what the situation, no matter what the breed of the cow is, and and we can even lump beef cows into this situation as well, she's going to have better fertility at a P1 and have decreased pregnancy loss from that P1 to P2 window. And so even though we haven't done trials specifically on the ground in New Zealand, I would be very comfortable recommending these exact uh, research findings and extrapolating them to the dairy industry in New Zealand because I think of all the different situations we have tested, it comes out the same no matter the way you look at it. 
So I suppose my key takeaways from our discussion is that one, having a planned targeting heat detection is crucial for ensuring you have the best chance of getting cows pregnant, that the use of heat detection aids like Estratex can help improve pregnancy rates by ensuring the cow is mated at the right time during her heat cycle, and that the timing of conception impacts whether that pregnancy is retained. Hopefully I've captured that right there for you, Kai. Yeah, I think that summarizes everything really well. And I'll just add one point to that is a good reproductive management plan, doesn't matter what you're talking about it in, cannot overcome other major issues on a farm. And so you can have the best reproductive management plan in the world. You can be using the best semen in the world. You can have be working with the best people in the world. But if you have other deficiencies in your farm from a nutrition point of view, from a management point of view, whatever it might be, it's not a silver bullet. It's not something that's going to all of a sudden advance the rest of the farm forward just because it's going to help, no doubt. But I just want people to keep that in mind and remember that it's sort of think about reproductive management on a daily basis and think about how everything else you do around that, how it affects that. I think that's a a helpful way to think about it. Yeah, I think that's a very important point. Here in New Zealand, we talk about the eight pieces of the pie. Heat detection and reproduction and all that sort of stuff is is an entire year's sort of worth of planning to do with body condition scoring and timing and management and bull management and all that sort of stuff. So very, very important. Well, thank you so much, Kai. Here at CRV, we're proud of the Estratec heat detection aid that Kai talked about, and they've been a very popular choice for dairy farmers for many years. The additional feature added to the patch in 2019 clearly shows the intensity of the heat, which Kai talked about, and thereby helping our farming customers successfully detect whether that animal is really ready to breed or not. Farmers have a lot riding on their AB, so we want to ensure they are putting cows up at the right time, initially to get them in calf, but also to minimise the risk of pregnancy loss. Your research, Kai, shows just how important this is. Thank you so much for joining me today, Kai, all the way from the USA. Really appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. And if you'd like to know more about Dr. Kai Poehler's research, then check out the link on the CRV website, www.crvforall.co.nz. Thanks for listening to CRV Embreed's Better Heard podcast. Read more about today's topic and our panel guests by visiting CRV Ambreed's website, www.crv4all, that's the number 4all.co.nz, or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Check out our upcoming topics and join us again soon for your Better Heard Fix.